are you all? Thank you for joining me today. This is Jasmine Top Show. Today, um, I'm in this beautiful uh, laundry room of ours, and uh, I'm here to juice. So I want to show you the juicer that I've been using probably for the past four to five years, maybe more like four. I can't quite remember um, exactly when I got it, but probably four to five years. Uh, this is a Kuvings, K-U-V-I-N-G-S. I've um, been using it quite a bit. Um, I would say for the first two years, we would use it probably four times out of the week and then we moved and it was in storage for about a year or so before we started taking it out again and use it and now I am going back um, to juice about maybe three four point four times a week depending on the week um, so far, no problem. Um, it's it's one of the ones that it's called, if I say it right, masticating. So basically, it's um, the motor doesn't really get hot. It doesn't ruin um, the juice or the ingredient in, within the juice when we juice it. So part to this one, we have like a regular Phillips one. And one of the main difference is uh, of course, the price, you know, that was much cheaper. I don't have it here because I have, um, I think, gave it to my mom, but my mom is not really using it. So that one, after I juice, uh, when I clean up the um, the pulse, you know, around the motor, you can feel it. It's really, really wet. Now, with this one, it comes out you know, a lot, you know, I would say a lot, right? I wouldn't say 10 times, but, you know, for that kind of measurement, it's really hard to, for me to gauge because I'm just kind of guessing, right? So um, I got the red one uh, when I got it. This is about, uh, I got it overseas, so maybe about 500 US dollars. Now, again, you know, I've been using it for at least four or five years, and it, comes with little different gadgets and I have a little accessory that I can really use to make um, basically they call it ice cream but I would call it like a frozen sorbet uh, with real fruit um, if you want but I haven't really used it I just felt like if that's something that you want you can buy it but I bought that accessory never really opened it and never really tried it um, it can do nut milk um, when I was watching the demonstration by one of the lady when I was living abroad, um, I think she would soak um, maybe almonds and then we'll juice it too. So, but this is not what I use it for. Um, I guess I, you know, I don't really drink milk all that much, uh, almond milk. I, you know, if I do, I just kind of buy it. Um, but. You know, if there's a point of time that I would drink a lot, then maybe I will start doing it. But I thought it was really, really cool. I believe what she did was just soak the old almond like for eight hours or so, and then she, you can start juicing it, and then what um, have almond milk comes out. But what I juice um, all the time now is celery juice. I know it sounds kind of gross to some of you that might never heard of it. But I know it's gaining um, popularity because of um, Anthony William. And uh, he has a few books out now. And I have recently introduced that to one of my friends. And she found it really fascinating. And so apparently celery, celery juice is very, very healing to our body. But if you want to know more about that, um, I can do another video some other time. But you can... Um, I know that was not his first book, but when I started, I started with The Liver Rescue, which is maybe book number four or number six. I can I don't even know. I would say number four. Um, I just found it really fascinating and answered a lot of the questions that I've been having, especially um, my mother is always um, not in a very good shape and she has a lot of symptoms, you know, chronic symptoms, and that kind of explained a lot. You know, so I do celery juice. So um, 
you know, I just kind of cut them up and uh, they're ready to go. Oh, so another reason why I would do it in my uh, laundry room, I have no um, masking, you know, I didn't clean up my kitchen counter to show you, like I would juice it, you know, at my perfect spot. So this is really where I juice it every day. Now we are living in an apartment, so space is a little bit limited. My kitchen is not that big. And the reason why I put it on top of my washer, which is very sturdy, the lid, is because when uh, I mentioned I bought it when I was overseas, so it's 220 volt. And um, I'm in the US right now, so it's 110. And uh, because it's a quite an expensive machine, I didn't want it to just give it away and buy a new one. Uh, that's 110. And so um, I'm connected. I don't know, let me see if I can show you. A little bit messy, okay? So I'm connected to a, next to a trash can is the, I think it's called a transformer. So um, because it's quite bulky, uh, I don't think we can use a smaller transformer because uh, it needs to match the power, right? So I just kind of put it in my laundry room. So hopefully, um, maybe when we move to a house or something, I have a better space. Or actually, I was trying to actively convince my mom to see if she wants it because she's in a place that uses 220. And then maybe I can buy a new one. I just don't want it to just toss it. You know, I just wanted to maybe pass it on to my mom or something. But she says she doesn't need it. She has something that she bought um, not too long ago. So we'll see how long I'll keep this one. Uh, I know it's a little bit inconvenient. My husband keep always saying, like, just, just get a new one, you know, so that we can save space for the transformer and things like that. But I'm like, it's $500, so I don't want it. Maybe it's $4.49, you know, here online on Amazon, whatever. But I just, you know, it's not like a $40, $49 machine that I can just get rid of and get a new one. But, you know. Um, maybe at one point. So uh, let's just start. So I already pre-assemble it, but uh, I can show you after I juice, we can uh, take it apart so we can kind of see what you need to do to um, uh, uh, to wash, you know, to clean. Now, the one thing I do want to mention that um, our, there is a stopper here. You know, that's where the juice came out. This is where the um, the fiber comes out. We have a stopper, but I don't know whether I just never look hard enough when we move after we move that maybe it's still in the box, but it just doesn't really bother me. Um, you can replace it. I think we replace it once for the stopper. That was pretty much the only thing we had to replace uh, ever for this machine. Um, but it just basically um, you can stop it until you are ready to release the juice. But like for me, it's a small thing, and um, I don't need it. So I'm hoping that you can see it real well. So make sure this is um, uh, this comes with it, right? And then I have my own glass, whatever that is, and we have this. But I, most of the time, I don't really need it. So I'm just going to turn it on. Make sure it's in. I started putting in the celery stick. So usually I aim to make a full glass, which is about 16 ounces, and we'll see how good I am today. See the fibers coming out up here. It's still coming out. So I'll just kind of let it run for a little longer. It changes color already. So just have to drink fresh and um, fast, you know, so then, you know, the oxid reduce the uh, oxidation, the time for the oxidation. So I think this is good. So I'm going to turn it off and I just need to make sure that, you know, because I don't have a stopper, so that's probably the one thing that is a little bit inconvenient that, you know, you just have to make sure that it, uh, especially because I'm doing it on the top of the washer, I don't want my clothes to have um, celery juice stain, right? So this is the glass. It's already turning a little dark. It's, um, usually when it comes out, it's like really bright green. So I'm going to drink it and then I'm going to show you 
um, how to take that apart and uh, to wash, okay? I have to be your lips. So now that we're ready to take it apart, this part is sometimes a little tricky, especially I felt like with celery, sometimes I felt like it's stuck because I think the fiber is so uh, hard and so much, you know, but when you do like fruits like apples and oranges, it's a lot easier. I think it just maybe not as much fiber or the fiber is not as hard. So I just have to twist it. So I put my elbow behind it so it will give me some leverage and then I um, do that. Well, one stick didn't get juice, so that's okay. So I just have to be really careful. I put it here. I have a little um, container for it. And then, so the whole thing can be lifted up. Now, of course, you have to take out the middle part. And so normally, so you just twist it. Like I said, when you do fruits, it's a lot easier, but it's my celery, it's um, stuck. So you wash it. Make sure all the crease is clean. This brush, that you can see it's kind of worn, came with the juicer and it's super, super convenient. So maybe I'll take it to the sink and show you how I clean it exactly, but I take it out. Usually I don't really take it out, I just take the whole thing to the sink, right? There's no point of taking it out and making a mess here. But I'm going to show you really quick, that's the reason. So you take the middle part, it's really, it's heavy, that is the heavy part, so don't drop it. And then the next thing is you take this out, right? And then this part takes out, so both parts needs to be clean. I like to clean it right away, and then this is this part. Now, the tricky part is, uh, I would also take, there's a, a little, uh, I don't know what to call it. It's not suction cup, but it's a little stopper here. Um, when I wash it, I take it apart, I take it out so that, you know, water can get in and get out, rinse it out. And then, but before you juice it, you will put it back. Otherwise, the juice will leak out when you start juicing. So you can see, I don't know if you can see, it gets a little wet so on top of here. So you just have to kind of wipe it off and usually I just wipe it off and kind of put it on the side and it just kind of constantly stay there because I don't want to unplug the wire if I have to juice like three, four times a day. So I'm going to take this to the sink and um, maybe I'll show you how to clean it. Okay. This is um, probably the best place to show it. So I am usually cleaning this one first. Now I don't put it away. You guys might want to put it away. Um, I just don't have the space because of uh, a little bit of the limitation of the space. So I usually just rinse this thing, right? So let me put it down so that you can see that. So I just rinse it, no, not much that you need to brush or anything, and especially it's a little bit hard. Okay, so I put it here. This one's usually clean, I don't really use it all that much, but if you do, just clean it. So this is the, the one of the parts that is much harder, no, not, not hard, but you, know, you have to clean really well. The dirt is the crease right in the middle, so you use this one that came with the juicer. And you just kind of brush just to make sure the fiber is out and clean. Right, so all the fiber is out. Clean, I just put it on the side. The next one. This one is easy too, okay? So there's a little fiber that will hang on, tangle, so you just have to clean it. Okay, now this is one of the harder parts. If you don't clean it right away, you will soak it because, um, you know, the fiber, when it get dry, get hard. And when they get hard, it's harder, it's, you know, it's harder to come off. 
when it's uh, hydrated, it's soft and it's easier to um, get because there are like a lot of fine holes, right? You can see, um, you know, there's a hole, a lot of fiber. So just, you know, do your best when you clean it and so that it doesn't get rotten and you don't taste weird. So just use the brush. I probably have to replace the brush skin, but again, this is the original brush that came with. You can see that it's, you know, kind of worn, but it still works. Um, honestly, I don't know where to get the replacement here. Maybe just online, looking online. Just make sure you brush really well through the hole, both inside and outside, just to make sure no um, residue, right? So pull out excess fiber this is the part that takes the longest to clean because again we have to make sure that it's um, no more residue within the holes, the really fine holes. I mean, especially if you put it away after, if you're not using it all the time, just make, make, make sure that it's really clean. So I'll kind of use my eye to look inside. Um, So, oops, this one is clean, you can see. So I just kind of let it hang dry. Well, yeah, and um, there's a lot of plastic, please, please don't put it in the dishwasher. Um, read the instruction if you do get this one, but um, yeah, hand wash, hand wash, please. So this is the part. Might also take a little bit of time. So this is the stopper that I'm telling you that I'll take it out so I can clean all this. So the cool part of this um, brush is basically it's, it kind of fits here. It kind of fits here, technically. I use this, the back of it. This is what the lady showed me when I looked, uh, watched the demo. You use this to clean, to get the fiber out that's stuck. Okay, so if you take it out, I usually run it in the water, right? So see how much you can catch. So, and then inside, it's stuck to, it's really hard with a celery. Again, if you do just fruit, it's not that bad. But this, like, it's like, I can't even pull it out at times. It's like, just stuck, you know? Sometimes I get hurt and I, I pinch my own finger when I'm trying to pull it out. So just get as much out as possible and run water so it will kind of help loosen up the, uh, sometimes it just, just loosen up, right? And then this I have to kind of figure out myself because I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I want to set juice celery because it's so hard to clean so after I take uh, some parts out you know it's like halfway through I don't know if you can see it but it's like kind of halfway through now I just kind of start poking pushing it down right just to make sure then they will come out then I keep taking it out scooping it out right scoop it out and then keep running in the water. And then keep pushing it down. Just do step by step. And then it's almost out. It's almost out now. So there's a little bit left. That's when I say that, you know, I don't know if you can see it, like a little piece hanging out, a small piece. So that's when I take the move the stopper and just let water run through. 
You flip the last pieces at the corner. Part is clean too, which this part is not hard at all. This part is where the juice comes out, this part is where the fiber comes out, the square one. Now, of course, this is an old model, right? I don't know how different it is right now. I just wonder if something stuck on the fiber piece under. So the other part I wanted to kind of warn you guys is I didn't discover this until like, I don't know, like a couple months ago. I see this is a rubber piece at the bottom. And I can see that sometimes you will see a rim of black. And if you um, watch me sometimes, I am uh, really cautious when something that turns black. Actually, as a matter of fact, it has a little bit, I don't know how much you can see, but let me but this piece actually can't be taken out. That's my whole point. So um, it's rubber. So you just kind of have to squish and then it just comes out like that. Now let me show you. This piece needs to probably clean from time to time because you can see my celery kind of got in between. And then um, honestly, for the longest time, we didn't clean it so it comes black, right? So might as well just clean it now. And clean it um, on a regular basis, but you can see, you know, maybe depending on how often you juice it, I think it's a um, it's a really good habit. So now it's a lot cleaner. So I'm just going to leave you with that today, right? And um, and then you clean the rim of the container, of course, uh, not just the rubber piece, but this piece. And um, let it dry and then you can put it back just make sure you don't lose it you know or you just put it back right away so that's it for juice i just kind of let it hang dry here so again you know i don't have a lot of space in my kitchen so i'm just going to leave it like that and i hope you enjoy now this is the only um masticating if i say it right juicer that i have used you know i know that um other people, they have these different brands. They all love their juicers. So you just have to find the one that you like. But again, this one, um, based on my record, it's not like I only juice 10 times. You know, throughout the past four years, I probably, we probably juice like 400 times, uh, if not more, because we do use it on a regular basis, especially when my children were younger, that we do juice um, or smoothies almost every day. So between the juicer, and the blender like we basically run something every day and now that i don't use the juice for them anymore i juice it for myself and sometimes we do but um yeah anyway so i hope you enjoy and uh, let me know if you have any comments or feedback all right i'll see you soon bye